Hello and welcome again to this new and more exciting video format. I'm sure this format will be more interesting and allow you to remember more. This is Azali again meeting you in Unit 8. Kali ini kita akan berbincang tentang abstract noun. Saya akan berkongsi 6 kategori dan 11 formula untuk mengenal abstract noun. Setakat ini kita telah berbincang tentang common noun, proper noun, countable noun, uncountable dan concrete noun. Ya, memang banyak jenis kata nama dalam bahasa Inggeris. Dan kita akan tambah lagi dalam video ini dengan abstract noun. So, if you have not watched those videos, please watch them so that you understand this video better. Dan juga jangan lupa untuk subscribe dan tekan butang loceng untuk mendapat notifikasi video akan datang, insya Allah. Seperti yang telah kita bincang dalam video lepas, bahasa Inggeris membezakan antara concrete nouns iaitu perkara yang boleh kita capai dengan panca indera seperti penglihatan, pendengaran, bau, sentuh dan rasa. Abstract noun is the exact opposite of concrete nouns. It names nouns that cannot be experienced with our five senses. Jadi, abstract nouns adalah perkara yang tak wujud dalam dunia fizikal dan tidak boleh dilihat rasa, bau, sentuh atau didengari. In other words, abstract nouns are non-physical things. Abstract noun sangat penting kerana di masa akan datang kita perlu tahu bila untuk menggunakan artikel a, n, the dan bila untuk menggunakan some, much, any dan sebagainya. Membuat kesilapan sebegini adalah terlalu asas kerana tidak memahami konsep abstract dan concrete nouns. In general, abstract nouns only take the singular form. And because in any communication, we will use a lot of nouns beside verbs, not mastering this concept will lead us into making enormous amounts of basic errors. Ya, yeah, dalam kebanyakan komunikasi, kita akan banyak menggunakan kata nama dan kata kerja. Jika kita tak memahami konsep ini, kita akan banyak membuat kesilapan nahu yang asas. Apapun anda tak perlu risau, saya akan berkongsi formula untuk memahami abstract noun supaya mudah kita mengesan dan mengenalnya. Sebenarnya ada beberapa kriteria yang kita boleh gunakan sebagai panduan untuk menentukan sesuatu kata nama itu abstract noun. We can categorize them into events atau peristiwa, emotions atau perasaan, experience atau pengalaman, kategori quality, kategori idea, konsep dan state of being iaitu sesuatu keadaan. So abstract nouns can be categorized into six major categories. The first category is events like parties, holidays, journeys and birthdays. Yeah? So kategori pertama dalam abstract noun adalah contohnya peristiwa-peristiwa yeah? seperti sesuatu majlis ataupun cutian ataupun perjalanan dan sebagainya. The second category for us to detect an abstract noun is to look at whether the word explains emotions. Yeah? Dalam kategori kedua adalah perasaan. So you have emotions like fear, pain, happiness, sadness. Yeah? Dalam kategori ini kita akan lihat jika sesuatu perkataan menceritakan tentang perasaan, emosi seperti takut, sakit atau kesakitan, kegembiraan, kesedihan dan sebagainya itu menunjukkan dia adalah abstract noun. Because like in category 1, you cannot touch the event, you cannot touch the party, you cannot touch the holiday, you cannot touch journeys, you know. So that becomes an abstract noun. In the same way, in category 2, emotions are things that you cannot touch. You cannot touch fear, pain, happiness, sadness, etc, etc. So that's why it falls into the category of abstract nouns. The third category is quality. For example, the word courage. Honesty, patience. You know, some people have that kind of quality. They have the quality of being courageous. They, they, they are honest or they have patience. So these are also things that you cannot touch. You cannot see. You can use your senses to experience them. Yeah. Sebagaimana juga kategori kedua tadi kita tengok dari sudut quality. Yeah, seseorang itu mempunyai keberanian. Yeah, courage ataupun kejujuran. Ini adalah semua perkara yang tidak boleh kita capai dengan Panca Indra. The fourth category are categories of concepts. These are concepts, you know, things that, that doesn't exist in the physical world. For example, the concept of comfort, the concept of faith, the concept of failure, success. These are all things that uh, we can only imagine. And we cannot touch them. We can see them, we can smell them, we can taste them. That's why they're also in the category of abstract nouns. 
Ya, jadi dalam kategori keempat ni, uh, konsep seperti keselesaan, kepercayaan, kegagalan. These are all not concrete nouns. These are abstract nouns. In category 5, we look at ideas. For example, the word democracy, knowledge, wisdom. These are all ideas. And again, they are not things that you can touch. They don't exist in the physical world. Alright, jadi kategori yang kelima ni adalah kategori idea seperti demokrasi, ilmu, kebijaksanaan dan sebagainya. The sixth category of abstract nouns is called states of being. These words describe a situation that describes the state of what is happening. For example, chaos. Okay, things are not happening in an orderly manner. Or misery, you know, people are not having a good time, people are having a hard time. Or nervousness, it describes a person who is being nervous, for example. So, that's these are all states of being. Yeah, dalam kategori ke-6 ini, menunjukkan keadaan, chaos, huru hara, contohnya. Misery, kesengsaraan, menunjukkan bagaimana seseorang itu tidak bahagia. Dan seterusnya, uh, nervousness, menunjukkan seseorang itu gementar. So, these words are words in the abstract nouns. So, these are examples of categories of abstract nouns. These are common words we see every day actually. Jadi, bahasa Inggeris ini memang sangat berbeza dari sudut ini dengan bahasa Melayu. Alright, to make you understand better, you could see that around concrete nouns are abstract nouns. For example, a clock is concrete but time is abstract. Another example is if you look at birthday cakes, balloons and candles are concrete objects or concrete nouns. But the birthday event itself is abstract noun. Jadi sebagai contoh, okay, hari jadi concrete, tetapi peristiwa majlis hari jadi itu sendiri abstract. Or that a boat is concrete but the voyage is an abstract noun. Ya, yeah, kapal itu adalah sesuatu yang concrete, tetapi perjalanan itu adalah abstract noun. Another example, a car is concrete but the journey is an abstract noun. Jadi bahasa Inggeris ni agak pelik sikit ya. Yeah. Sebenarnya banyak peliknya. Nanti kita akan belajar banyak lagi perkara-perkara pelik dalam bahasa Inggeris ni. Sebenarnya, bila kita tahu kepelikan bahasa Inggeris itu, belajar menjadi lebih menarik dan mudah difahami. Sama macam bila kita faham seseorang yang pelik. Bila kita tahu sebab dia pelik dan beza dengan orang normal, itu menarik kan? Alright, there's another way to identify abstract nouns. Satu lagi cara mengenal abstract noun adalah dengan melihat ejaan tertentu di akhir perkataan. Some words with certain endings, or we call them suffix, will signal that they are abstract nouns. This is also another formula to identify abstract nouns. Actually, there's 11 formulas. Formula pertama adalah dengan melihat perkataan yang berakhir dengan ejaan T-I-O-N. For example, some common words include words like education that comes from the word educate or examination that comes from the word examine, graduation that comes from the word graduate, addition that comes from the word add, multiplication from the word multiply, Creation from the word create and etc. So that's quite easy for us to identify. Alright, let me share 10 more words in this category. For example, the word action, direction, location, celebration, demonstration, collaboration, subtraction, solution, description, animation. Now, although it looks like it's easy because you need to only add letters T-I-O-N. But in words like solution, that came from the word solve, note that the spelling changes is quite drastic from the original word. And in the same way, the word description, that comes from the word describe. Jadi, kita kena hati-hati. So, ada kalanya pertukaran ejaan agak drastic. Ya? Seperti dalam perkataan solve dan solution, dan describe dan description. Formula kedua, words ending with ship. For example, mothership, iaitu kapal induk. Friendship, persahabatan. Leadership, kepimpinan. Township, perbandaran. Dealership, partnership, courtship dan sebagainya. So, let's look at some other examples like flagship, viewership, membership, readership, partnership, directorship, courtship. Spaceship. So, these are all some more common examples. Yang kategori ni agak mudah. Sebab, all you need to do is add the suffix 
SHIP at the end and you're all set to go. The third formula are words ending with ISM or ISM. For example, communism, socialism, capitalism, federalism, secularism. So, kebanyakan perkataan ni ditambah dengan ISM, ISM adalah falsafah dan falsafah adalah idea atau konsep. Sebab itu ia menjadi abstract noun. Okay, some more examples uh, that I can share here include professionalism, journalism, romanticism, feudalism, skepticism, liberalism, pragmatism, secularism, and even terrorism. Di sini agak mudah juga untuk dikesan kerana kita hanya perlu menambah ISM di hujung tanpa apa-apa perubahan ejaan pada perkataan asal. Formula keempat, words ending with hood. For example, motherhood, keibuan. Ya. Uh, neighborhood, kejiranan. Brotherhood, semangat kekitaan. Falsehood, ya, kepalsuan. Prophethood, kenabian. These are all quite straightforward because all you need to do is to add H-O-O-D, hood, at the end of the word. Another 10 examples will be sisterhood, nationhood, knighthood, childhood, falsehood, adulthood, priesthood, boyhood, and witchhood. So, like the abstract noun in the ism category, you only need to add the suffix hood at the end and you're all done. So, this is quite easy. The next one is the category that ends with the letter or with the spelling ity at the end. For example, clarity, ability, rarity, curiosity, humility, absurdity, equality, humility, majority and minority. Okay, these are quite straightforward because the spelling doesn't change that much except in some cases, for example, the word clarity. Okay, let's look at 10 more common words in this category. For example, stability, responsibility, predictability, continuity, sustainability, peculiarity, flexibility, compatibility, and authenticity. Now, again, you will see that some words uh, change quite drastically in spelling, for example, sustainability. In category number 6, we'll look at words that end with M-E-N-T. Ya, kita tengok perkataan-perkataan yang berakhir dengan M-E-N-T. Sebagai contoh, government, commitment, resentment. Okay, and uh, some more that I can share here, refreshment, disarmament, containment, commandment, discernment, enlargement, agreement, achievement, engagement, and increment. Some words go through quite a radical change in spelling. For example, in the word increase and increment. So you can see that the the spelling is quite different in the abstract noun. Sekali lagi, macam kita bincang di awal tadi, bahasa Inggeris tu agak pelik. Eh? Jadi, kadang-kadang kita dengan mudah kita boleh letak M-E-N-T di hujung tetapi ada masanya kita terpaksa membuat sedikit perubahan dalam ejaan. So, tak boleh kita hanya nak letak increment, for example. Eh? So, how do you learn this? You have to read a lot, you have to memorize them because there's no, basically there's no rule to remember this. Uh, sebab tu kita kena banyak membaca. Yeah. Seterusnya, words ending with N-E-S-S. For example, friendliness, usefulness, cleanliness, happiness, readiness, tidiness. Okay, and some more words in this category would be brightness, kindliness, shapeliness, fairness, freshness, eagerness, wilderness, sadness, nervousness, and sharpness. So, this is also a simple category because all you need to do is to add N-E-S-S at the end and the spelling doesn't go through a radical change except in some words like kindliness. All right. In the 8th category, dalam category ke-8, we look at words ending with E-N-C-E. For example, patience, kesabaran, perseverance, ketabahan, reverence, penghormatan. Okay, in other examples, we look at words like Confidence, inconsistence, effervescence, independence, indifference, incompetence, coincidence, negligence, resilience, and preference. Basically, these are also straightforward where you just add ENCE at the end. In the ninth category, we will see abstract nouns with words ending with AL. For example, comical, parental, 
identical, dismissal, medical. Now let's look at 10 more common words in this category. They are biological, mathematical, musical, astronomical, experimental, experiential, hierarchical, hypothetical, instrumental, and economical. Again here, the abstract noun is quite easy to form and easy to detect because you only add the letter AL at the end of the spelling of the original word or the base word. In the 10th category, you look at words ending with ACY. For example, democracy, aristocracy, meritocracy, bureaucracy, bankruptcy. These are abstract nouns because you can't see them. Uh, these are ideas, eh? the ideas of democracy, aristocracy, and so on and so forth. Another 10 examples from this category will be supremacy, accuracy, technocracy, intimacy, adequacy, privacy, legitimacy, primacy, literacy, advocacy, and pharmacy. Again, these are all quite straightforward. All you need to do is just add ACY at the end of the base word. And the formula for the 11th category are words ending with A-G-E. For example, mileage, appendage, and signage. So these are all also simple examples and they are uh, quite simple in usage because all you need to do is to add the letter A-G-E. Another common 10 words in this category will be leverage, percentage, pilgrimage, orphanage, parentage, patronage, personage, brokerage, and frontage. This category is also quite easy to understand because it is as simple as adding A-G-E at the end of the word to make it into an abstract noun. So you see how easy it is for us to detect the abstract noun just by looking at the suffix or the spelling at the end of the words. If you see the spelling like what we have explained in all the 11 categories, most of the time, or 99% of the time, you will see an abstract noun. Alright, I hope you are now clear about the difference between concrete and abstract nouns. Formulanya sangat mudah, iaitu dengan melihat jika sesuatu itu dari kategori events, atau peristiwa, emotions, atau perasaan, quality, concept, ideas, ataupun keadaan or states of being. Jadi sekarang kita sudah tahu Enam. kategori dan 11 formula untuk mengesan abstract noun iaitu dengan melihat ejaan di akhir sesuatu kataan. Kita berjumpa lagi di unit 9 di mana kita akan mempelajari pula konsep compound nouns. Terima kasih kerana menonton video ini dan ingat untuk subscribe, like dan share untuk menonton video akan datang. Thank you and goodbye.